Welcome to the first video for the Water for Transport chapter. Throughout this chapter, we're going to talk about the importance of blood and what kind of role blood plays in our body. Now, for the first dot point is, is all about blood as well. I'll read the actual dot point. It says, identify the forms in which each of the following is carried in mammalian blood. Carbon dioxide, oxygen, water, salts, lipids, nitrogenous waste, and other products of digestion. Now, this dot point, the verb itself is identify, which means it's pretty straightforward. We just have to name and what we have to name is we have to name the forms. That S is important because for some there's more than one form. So identify the forms in which each of the following is carried in mammalian blood. And mammalian blood that just means blood of mammals. So humans are mammals and kangaroos, dogs, these are all mammals. So what kind of form that do these following things get carried in mammalian blood? And before we start, I want to go over again quickly what the role of the blood and the blood vessels are. So first, I'll give you a quick analogy, which I'll use again later as well. So when it comes to blood vessels, blood vessels are like our transport system. For example, highways, which is we have high moving and fast moving traffic, are like our arteries and veins. These just move places really fast from place A to place B, and they're just full of traffic. That's our arteries and veins. And these are all examples of blood vessels. And also we've got our capillaries. Now these are a lot less trafficy, so they're all less small, they're small in, in size, but they're equally important because these are like our side streets. So we can make sure that we actually can get to our home because we can go in that side street and get directly to our home. So capillaries connect all cells to the body and arteries and veins just get transport stuff really quickly to that place. And, it's, and then it branches off into these capillaries. Now, when it comes to what role these arteries, veins, and capillaries play, they play three main roles. They also play a couple of different other ones, but these are the three main roles. The movement of heat, we talked about that in the last chapter. Most of that heat is actually transported in water, and plasma is mostly water. So heat itself travels in the body through the blood. So that's one role. That's one we talked about last chapter. In this chapter, we're going to talk much more about the other two. So movement of nutrients, and what I mean by nutrients is all the good stuff. So for example, glucose, lipids, um, fats, lipids and fats, same thing. But all the things that we need are nutrients. And also we need to have talk about the removal of waste, so all the bad stuff. And this is what blood does, or the blood vessels, to help us remove waste and get nutrients to the cells that need them. Now when it comes to this dot point, it says identify the forms. So again, the blood vessels were like our highways and our streets. And the forms that things move in is like what kind of vehicle they, or how, what kind of transport they use to get to places. So for example, do they use a truck, a car, a motorcycle, a bicycle, and all these, or do they walk? So these are all different forms they could be walking in or or being transported in. And each of these ones that are named here can have different forms. So you can either move as one form or in different forms, depending on the actual um, product. So I'll talk about them as well. I'll talk about that now. So the ones we have to cover are these carbon dioxide, oxygen, salts, water, nitrogen's waste, lipids, glucose, and amino acids. And again, it says identify the form. So for a couple, there are more. And for the first two, carbon dioxide and oxygen, there are more than one form. So this is the diagram. Here we have our blood vessels. This could be a capillary artery vein, doesn't really matter. Um, but the most important part is that stuff travels in it. And we're going to talk about the forms that they travel in as well. So what we'll talk about first is carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide can travel in one of three forms. And what I'll do here is I'll actually number it from one to three. And this is about which one is the most likely, or which carbon dioxide travels most likely in number one, least likely in number three, and some of it can be found in number two. And I'll explain what they are as well. So the most of it is found as these hydrogen carbon ions. What they are is if we have CO2, which is carbon dioxide, if that reacts with water, which is H2O, and remember plasma is mostly water, so H2O reacting with carbon dioxide happens in our plasma. And when that happens, we have these hydrogen carbon ions formed, so HCO3 minus, that's our hydrogen carbon ions, and we also get these H pluses. And this is what makes it acidic, that's what makes it acidic. But the main form that carbon dioxide travels is as this hydronate carbonate ion. So I'll place that into our plasma because it travels as, this, as our number one way. So HCO3 
minus. It can also travel as the carbon amino hemoglobin. So carb, you can, the way you can remember this one is carb, as in carbon dioxide, amino, as in amino acids, and then hemoglobin. And what that is, this here is a red blood cell. So right here, this is a red blood cell. And red blood cells are full of something called hemoglobin. And these green dots are the hemoglobin. So this here is our hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, and in these hemoglobins, we can attach stuff to it. So the only role of red blood cells is to transport stuff. In this case, we've attached something to it, and we have attached these gray dots, which are meant to be carbon dioxide. So for every uh, hemoglobin, we can can attach copper ca carbon dioxide. So carbon amino hemoglobin is just when you have inside these hemoglobins, which are in red blood cells, if we have carbon dioxide attached to it, and that's number two way for it to travel. And the least likely way is if it's just dissolved in plasma. It's not as hydrogen carbon ions, but literally just by itself as CO2. So it's also possible, but least likely. So these are the three forms for carbon dioxide, hydrogen carbon ions, carbon amine hemoglobin, or dissolved in plasma. For oxygen, there are two ways. First is it travels in oxyhemoglobin, and second likely is that it's dissolved in plasma. And oxyhemoglobin is the same thing. So we have our hemoglobin, which is in our red blood cells, and if they have these oxygen attached to it, we don't call it carbon hemoglobin, we call it oxy, for oxygen, hemoglobin. And this is in our red blood cells, that's the most likely way. And the second li most likely way, or the least likely way, is dissolved in plasma. So if we have just these O2 molecules dissolved in plasma. Now water, 90% of plasma, 90% of plasma is water. So most of this pinker stuff is just you have your H2O molecules, which is water, making up most of that plasma. So water travels as water molecules. Salts, these travel as ions. So for example, NaCl, which is sodium chloride, this is your table salt. If you put that into our plasma, it goes into Na plus and Cl minus. So an ion is anything that is positively or negatively charged. So you put NaCl plus NaCl into our uh, water or into our plasma, it'll travel as Na plus and Cl minus. So it they travel as ions. Salts travel as ions. That's the most important part from this one. Salts travel as ions. Nitrogen's waste. And this was one of the waste products. Um, and it comes from the breakdown of protein. I'll talk about more of them very soon as well. But the main way it travels as is it travels as something called urea. So what I'll do is I'll just draw like a sm smallish red dot. And this is urea. And urea is dissolved in water or in plasma. So urea. So nitrogen waste travels mostly as urea. A bit of it is ammonia and, and uric acid, but the vast majority is urea. Lipids. These are fats. So lipids, another word for lipids is just fat itself. And fat itself can travel mainly in one or two different ways. And I've just named them both the same because they're very similar. In So this is meant to be actually lipoproteins. Lipoproteins. Or these chylomicrons. It's, just remember one of these names. Because what these actually are is you can imagine because the problem with fat. So lipids are fat. And the problem with fat is it doesn't dissolve in water. And remember I said plasma is 90% water. So if we put lipids into our fat, uh, if we put lipids into water or, or into a plasma, it wouldn't, it would float on top. It wouldn't move inside the actual plasma. It would float on top. So it doesn't dissolve. Does not dissolve. So one way we can try to make sure we can actually move fat in our, in our plasma is by putting it into a vessel. And this vessel is, we call it a lipoprotein or a chylomicron. So these are both examples of proteins. So what we do is we have this lipoprotein or chylomicron, which we have here. In this case, is this is a lipoprotein. And what we do is we actually put the lipid right inside. So inside would be lipoprotein. Uh, inside would be the lipid. So this would be the lipid or the fat. And this would allow it to be able to be transported inside the plasma without it touching water. So inside there's no water. And outside this water, and that's one way we can, the main way we can travel, and uh, we can transport lipids across our body. So here, this is a, a chylomicron, or we can just call it lipoprotein. Doesn't really matter. Let's call it lipoprotein. This part here, 
lipoprotein. And then inside, we have this yellow thing, which is meant to be our lipid. So it travels inside a lipid or lipoprotein. This is our lipid. And the reason why is because it can't dissolve in water. And the last one was our glucose and amino acids. And these are really easy to transport. They come from our small intestine. And they simply dissolve in plasma. So they kind of swim around in it, just like the other ones, well, some of the other ones. So we've got glucose, so amino acids, and glucose. Just sum up again, we have for carbon dioxide three ways. Main way is as hydrogen carbon ions, which were these HCO3 minus molecules. Uh, second main way is as carbon amine hemoglobin, which is attached to these hemoglobin, which are in red blood cells. The third way is if it's dissolved in plasma, so if it's just a CO2 in plasma, that's for carbon, uh, for carbon dioxide. For oxygen, we have oxyhemoglobin, which is the same thing. So oxyhemoglobin was our thing, which was in red blood cells. And oxyhemoglobin is we have oxygen attached to those hemoglobins. That's the main way. And the second uh, way is if it's dissolved in plasma, so if it's straight as O2 in plasma. Water, 90% of plasma is water, so the majority of this pink stuff would be water. And water just travels as these water molecules. So it's H2O. Salts, now these dissolve as soon as they hit water, and they dissolve into their, their ions, so salts travel as ions. So for example, if you put a salt such as sodium chloride into plasma, it would go into its sodium ion, Na+, and into chloride ion, chloride minus. This is an example. We have nitrogenous waste, and this is our waste product from protein digestion or protein breakdown. And this travels as urea, so these red dots were our urea. And we also have lipids. Lipids, this is was fat, so this is fat. The problem with fats is they don't dissolve in water, so they have to travel in like a carrier. And we call this carrier lipoproteins or chylomicrons, and they travel right inside the center of it. And then last but not least, we have the product of digestion. So these two are the products of digestion, glucose and amino acids. And they travel at dissolved in plasma. So they just travel as glucose or amino acids in plasma itself. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.